Hello again. Uh, thank you for joining us for the third ever DEF CON CZ mini conference. My name is Dorka. This is Marek. Hello. Yeah, this is not Radek, who usually stands here with me yeah, I'm, because I'm, Radek is sick. I'm a We're bit shorter, but I hope I will be adequate. Replacement. Yeah, it's good for my neck. So <laughs> thank you, Marek. And we're sen sending greetings to Radek to get better soon, recover soon. Um, okay, so some housekeeping notes from us and then we'll move to smoothly the to the panel discussion that Marek is moderating. Um, so for those who have never been here, we have three parallel par tracks of talks in the building, D2, D1, and D3 uh, on the top. Uh, then we have one workshop, so very unique, you should consider attending. It's in S building on the fifth floor. There are so many arrows to get there. And, and the space is limited and it's awesome workshop about sound. So music, very, music. very cool. Yes. So make sure you, you, check out, you check it out in the schedule and be the first one <laughs> there. It starts at 3 p.m. Yeah. Almost as important as talks and workshop, there is a coffee and snacks. And it's complimentary, and I believe you have already seen it. Uh, if you wear the badge, then uh, you will get a coffee. We are also collecting lightning talks uh, on the whiteboard. Well, it's not yeah. the whiteboard, but... Uh, Let's uh, call so it a whiteboard. <laughs> so if you have some short topic you would like to present to everybody, please write down yourself. Yeah, we will like close this day with a session full of lightning talks. They start, it starts at 6 p.m. And right afterwards, make sure you keep the badge or the keep the sticker here uh, because we're moving to Fleda for a social event. For the party. Or the party. It yes. depends on you how wild we will get. <laughs> <laughs> there is, uh, in, the, in the agenda, there is also one talk that is in Czech. So unfortunately, uh, we will not be able to uh, cater for English only speaking people, but you can watch it later on YouTube. There is a YouTube channel, DevConf. So please like it, subscribe. There will be all the talks uh, from today uh, uploaded over the next week or so. Yeah, this is the start of our YouTube career. Exactly, Marek. yes. Okay, I think that's it for the introduction of the conference, did I miss something? You're uh, very no, 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 no. All, all the notes now. covered, so so we are good. Okay, moving it to you. Thank all you. Right. And enjoy the conference. <laughs> okay, and uh, we will move to the first first event, and that is the panel discussion. I will I will share the mics. So. What is this uh, panel discussion about? Um, I will give you a short story, which I will, uh, which is the reason why I asked for this panel discussion. Uh, I am a software engineer in Red Hat, and I started my career because I played games, and I played an open source game, and I wanted to be a good at it. And so I started looking into the Python code to understand exactly what the mechanics are so I can exploit it. And over the time I started contributing and now my sound is better and now it's worse and all right. And over the time I learned Python and then I got hired as a tester and that's the history. So I believe uh, it's, it's a good that the open source is able to support education with meaningful tasks. You know, I was always quite bored by doing tasks like uh, sort the list because everybody did it already. But contributing to something living, to some living organism, even with something mi minor, uh, that, that's what gave me the reason to actually try. So here we are. I would like to discuss with my guests uh, whether the open source projects are ready whether they can be even readier. And yeah, I hope uh, we will have a nice brainstorming session. And uh, it will be a beginning of a broader discussion. 
All right. Now I will ask uh, my panelists to introduce themselves, and in the and I will also ask them to kind of position them within this problem space of education, open source projects, etc. So let's start with Matej. Hello, hello. That. Hello. So I'm Matej Teach. Um, I'm a software engineer at Red Hat, actually Marek's colleague. And um, the reason why I'm here uh, is that uh, we, in our team, we uh, maintain a huge open source project and uh, we managed to attract community to it and now we are in the growth phase with its challenges and, and benefits. And uh, even before I joined, I was a uh, general open source enthusiast and actually I got my first job because the boss at that time used a library that I've been maintaining. Yeah? So, uh, so my open source history goes, uh, goes like a lo long way back. Yeah, Dan. Hi, I'm Dan Czermak. I represent the Lizard people here. So I don't work at Red Hat, I work at SUSE. But I also contribute in the Fedora community. And so I guess I can contribute here by community experience. And I also support at SUSE internal network where we try to sponsor uh, open source contributions from newcomers. And I've been myself trying to push uh, in certain projects how to lower the barrier to entry to co for external contributors, especially non-technical ones. Thank you. Lukáš. Hello, uh, so uh, my name is Lukáš Kotek and yeah, I am also, uh, I also work in Red Hat. I am a software quality engineer, uh, but uh, I guess that the reason why I am here is that I also uh, taught uh, at a high school for almost four years. I left, uh, but uh, I still feel certain, certain depth here. So I currently uh, do uh, talks about uh, Linux and uh, open source uh, for one high school. I also uh, prepared some workshop here. Yeah, and basically, I'm trying to uh, fill the gap here yeah, between uh, what uh, high school expects and maybe how we can, how we can uh, prepare the students here yeah, in, in this way. And Vara? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Great to be here, uh, great platform. Uh, before I answer, uh, I'll just ask a question. Uh, who is a student uh, at the moment? Uh, just to like, get, get some picture of the audience, uh, wonderful. Uh, thank you so much. So like roughly uh, half of the people, which is, which is uh, great, and I hope you will have uh, many questions. So uh, my role is uh, educator and researcher. Uh, on the side of the education, uh, I am uh, teaching here at the university and at the same time uh, in uh, uh, being involved in a nonprofit organization, uh, trying to make uh, the tech education more approachable to girls, uh, which is called Chiquitas. Uh, and uh, in terms of the research, uh, my research is software engineering and software architecture research, and I would say that we actually hugely benefit from the access to uh, open source projects, uh, because much of the analysis of like how to um, develop and tailor software engineering practices uh, is uh, tested and validated uh, on open source projects. So uh, that's uh, like a bi bi bit of direction from which I will be speaking. Thank you. And last but not least, it's also you, dear audience, because you are also part of open source projects. So uh, maybe you have something to say, not only questions, but maybe you want to get uh, into the debate. So if you if, if you want, we can we can try. You know, the sound is a bit wonky. Uh, it's the first uh, first talk today, but uh, we can try to incorporate you. All right, I guess we can start with the first topic or question. That is, uh, I feel that there there is probably something that already works well. Uh, we have quite a few interns in Red Hat, for example. So, do y are you aware of any successes in this? Uh, combination or uh, connection of education and open source that, uh, that you would like to highlight or just mention? The Google Summer of Code, I mean, that's an easy one. Yeah. I think many, many projects, uh, many projects are a member of that. I know OpenSUSE submits 
multiple Google Summer of Code projects, it's a usually a great opportunity for students to just contribute there. So I hope you've heard of it. If not, Google it. I'm pretty certain it's going to show up as the first place. Um, so that's a, that's a great opportunity to just get your hands uh, get your hands wet, but it's not really so. It's it's really mostly for technical contributions. For but there's also the Google Summer of Docs, I believe it's the name, which is more for technical writing. So in case you're not a not a not a programmer, which I know might might sound weird, but those people exist as well. But they can also contribute very much to open source, and so that's a great opportunity for those as well. I can actually sh uh, say that uh, I've asked uh, the uh, chat GPT uh, what are the best uh, opportunities to, to start with uh, with open source and it has actually really many ideas. So uh, I want to say that there is not really like one uh, platform that you would really need to go to uh, if you want to start. There are so many opportunities and I would say that over time uh, open source, like many people are really making efforts uh, to make open source more approachable also because we still see that uh, it's not that easy as, as it might look. Uh, uh, we are like open community uh, and yet uh, uh, from the like distribution of different like ages and genders on the on the platform, we see that it's really n like not very diverse. Like the community is, is a, like there is a certain age uh, and certain gender uh, that you can find on the platform, uh, but yet uh, the community is investing enormous effort and is actually recognizing that uh, there needs to be uh, ways to make it approachable and make it fun. Uh, and also thanks to uh, Red Hat, who, for example, organized a, like a mini tutorial for high school girls that we had in education to really get their hands on contributing to open source, even if it, they were just like updating documentation, but still like having the experience, I think like like pushing through the first boundary is what makes a difference. Uh, so like uh, it doesn't matter like which, which platform to, to choose, but uh, to make the first step is important. Yeah, I think I can uh, continue with the uh, with the first step. Yeah, uh, I can give you one uh, uh, one thing. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we are at the DevConf. Yeah, it is the conference. Yeah, about open source and so on and so on. And I must say, I was uh, really glad every time when I uh, noticed that uh, there is some uh, student here yeah, of mine who visited the conference. Yeah, because I always tried to notify them. Yeah, hey, there is a Linux alt or yeah, there is a another conference open out and so on and so on and actually only minor number of my students uh, eventually came but they came and uh, I think it's just great that, that there are such a such a events here yeah, because they really need a starting point and I think that a lot of years ago yeah uh, it was uh, probably uh, some federal related event yeah or maybe Linux days or something like that yeah there I was uh, for a first time uh, really introduced to an uh, open source world. So yeah, starting point. Yeah, uh, I would, uh, I would uh, come back uh, to the topic of interns uh, that um, Marek mentioned. It's not uh, only the only scenario that an intern come to a company and works on an open source project, which is finally something else than uh, creating a graph or sorting a list. Uh, but uh, we have actually a very good experience uh, with a program for high school students when uh, they came uh, to, to our company and uh, they've been coming like for uh, two, three months. And we were teaching them programming on something else than sorting lists. Uh, we, were, uh, we were teaching them skills like uh, Git, uh, CI, good coding practices, architecture, and uh, things that are useful when uh, or developing an open, so open source project. And actually, uh, in our team uh, that uh, we, we did this activity in, uh, we have like two interns now, we can't have more, yeah? and both of them, they basically went through this program of ours, yes? So uh, if you ask the question, how do you attract um, interns to an incredibly dry topic yeah, of uh, regulations, compliance, scanning, and things like that. Th that's possible. We just need to make it nice for them. 
and uh, it's much more useful than uh, than uh, comparing lists alone and it works yeah it can really attract people and make them enthusiastic about that and that's really that's really nice because we need that boring stuff as well yeah because for interns it's not the boring world of regulations it's just coding right so it's it's the basic level so it's uh, it's more pleasant for them all right let's uh, let's stay on the positive note and Let's unleash uh, the fantasy a bit and uh, imagine what could be what could be the opportunities in the open source projects. And specifically, I believe it doesn't necessarily have to be just about coding, because the coding is is covered, you know. But maybe we have other ways how to incorporate even people from from different faculties. Faculty of Arts and or whatever, or Faculty of Law. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we want, but uh, it might be necessary. So, any ideas? Uh, I will. I will start with some basics, and uh, like we can then I think elaborate and uh, come come together with more ideas. So what I see as an educator, what um, the open source projects are already giving uh, to students and like what I find really huge. Like one is access to real world examples uh, because what we see in the classroom typically is that uh, you start from scratch with an empty screen, you are by yourself and uh, you have very clear context. Uh, so it's, it's been given, right? Like what is the assignment and wh what, is the, what is the context of the problem you are solving? Well, what you get access to through those open source projects is that you really see the, w the like real world examples, which have uh, much more complex context, right? Uh, very often you need to make um, decisions to weight like one decision against another because the assignment is not like that clear, so you are reaching a goal. Uh, and uh, you can see the thing in, in its breadth. Um, we see that like when you look at the problems that students have when they contribute to open source, like one of the biggest problems is actually like how to um, tackle complexity in their brains so that they can actually create a map of the solution in which they understand what impact their change has in the broad scope of the whole project. And that is a, like a competence that I believe is crucial to any developer, but they do not really have that opportunity to like get it through education. Um, so that is like, one example. At the same time, this is a great opportunity for the community if it wants to be more open to newcomers, to actually uh, create a way to create this map faster. Because uh, a newcomer or a student does not have this, uh, I would say, like a, a mental training to do that like fast and well. And that's why uh, many we lose many newcomers. It's actually those risk adverse people who are afraid that they will uh, they, they will uh, break something because they do not really know like what's what's beyond like how things influence each other. Uh, we are losing those people. Uh, uh, there was actually an interesting study uh, that was done on Hadoop um, by creating a documentation and trying like a, of an architecture of the whole uh, code base and trying to understand how it changed uh, the newcomers. Uh, ratio to contribute uh, and it was really substantial so like people who are newcomers when they like get this quicker understanding of the architecture of the whole solution they're much quicker to actually uh, contribute uh, so yeah so this is the real world examples uh, and everything that like all that uh, that is around it and plus I would like add one more thing and that is access to expertise because they learn from uh, those who really know what they are doing. Um, so access to expertise, and I will keep that short so that I give space to others. Yeah, I, I will just uh, very quickly like second uh, for, for that, that uh, my biggest frustration was uh, that uh, there was lack of documentation or I was unsure uh, whether the contribution that I'm trying to do is uh, good enough, uh, whether it breaks or not. And uh, this um, approach, we also, um, we went through this uh, in our project that we are focusing quite a lot on, on quality. So when somebody submits a pull request, 
they get quite a lot of feedback, which is automated, basically. But it's not garbage. It's uh, it's like uh, meaningful. Yeah, it's it's not that you switch on every check with default values and then you ignore three uh, the one, one third of it because it's too strict or doesn't make any sense. Of course, uh, this would be uh, very stupid. But um, I think that the proper CI and uh, up-to-date documentation with examples that it uh, really can lower the barrier and our observation confirms that. Like the community really is coming and they are able to come up with quite complex contributions and I think it's uh, thanks uh, to the investments into tests and, and, and documentation. So I would really say every open source project that wants to grow needs to focus on, on, on these things. Uh, I will. I will, for example, add one one thing. I, it's not necessarily related to to this uh, line of thought, but uh, in in our project uh, we work on with Matej. Uh, at some point, when we got uh, more contributors, we were thinking of organizing some online conference, very small one, but but just to meet meet the contributors from. Uh, the lizard folks and, and stuff. And you know, the engineers could organize the conference, but if there are people who are not engineers, the organization is usually better. You know, you can see here, the DevConf is good because it's not organized necessarily by engineers. So uh, it would be awesome to actually have somebody who could help us, you know, and so this can be an opportunity for somebody who likes to organize things and be more social without necessarily having a coding skills. And we would still benefit from it. So that, that could be one example of uh, other opportunities. Yep. Um, I, see, I see also another opportunity. I am not sure, to be honest, uh, if it's the realistic one, but uh, hey, let's imagine students uh, at a high school of a third or fourth grade, yeah. Students right before their final exams. And students, yeah, of the of this age, yeah, are, or at least some of uh, these students are pretty capable. Not only coding, but of course, other, uh, other fields of education, et cetera, et cetera. But this is not my point. Uh, my point is uh, they produce a lot of interesting stuff just because of their final exams. Final exams at high school is not only about these exams, but also about uh, a lot of interesting projects, yeah, created, created just for the purpose of these final, final exams, yeah. So where where these projects uh, remain, yeah, I would say in some almost hidden school repository, and it is not published. No one continues uh, continues with it. So. Hey, this is a lot of uh, wasted, actually at the end, wasted effort. And maybe this is an opportunity for open source community to try to, you know, to move a focus, to move a focus a bit to that. But maybe, maybe it is just a dream. Maybe it is a bit realistic. I'm not sure about it. So I'm going to maybe move more into the uh, non-technical contributions part because there's uh, I think there's already great projects out there. For instance, the Fedora Badges project, which is, uh, m I mean, at, at least from an artistic point of view, there's, uh, there's many people from outside who are just creating these cool badges. So in case you don't know the project, it's essentially an achievement system for contributing to Fedora. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty cool one, and all the badges are, or most of the badges are created by the community, and I frequently see also external people just contributing who might not even use Fedora, so I personally did not ask them, but uh, these are just, these are just people who find the, who find the project cool, who probably don't care about coding, or have no interest in learning, but they can still contribute, and there's a ton of ways, so that's a, that's a great project, and there's people can uh, people can contribute translations that's also that's also a pretty uh, pretty big thing um, since we are in the Czech Republic um, I'm and in case you speak Czech English I'm unfortunately a bit sorry because uh, many open source projects are already pretty well translated into Czech so 
but in case you speak some other less known, uh, less known language, that's also a great way to contribute. But then again, if something is already fully translated, doesn't mean that the translation is actually good. So reviewing it is also a great idea. Writing documentation, in case you know the project, you don't have to be a coder for that. And there's plenty of other ways. Often just trying the software out and giving feedback can be a bit hard, because if you just try someone else's software and you want to tell them it's not good, it might come off, uh, it uh, can be hard to communicate. But uh, that's then also more of a task to the, to the project to provide means how to get feedback and how to, how to take it from external people. OK, thank you. Uh, I will we just have uh, a question back there. Yeah, I've, I will quickly say, I believe I forgot to say that uh, on a Slido in the room, or I, under the hashtag devconf-d2, you can post your questions, and they will be gathered. But if you have, yes. Yeah, I will. I will repeat. So the note note was that the projects are. St always changing, so the, the lines to translate are also changing. So the, the need for translation is continuous. It, it will not dry out. I mean, in a perfect world uh, with perfect tooling, the tooling itself would tell you, you should check this because it's changed between revisions. But then again, we probably have all seen our tooling and how it sometimes doesn't do the things the right way. <laughs> 